Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Craig Brown. I'm just going to be presenting a, um, a paper from the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery from April this year. Uh, it's, it was titled The Comparison of One and Two Stage Revision of Total Hip Arthroplasty Complicated by Infection. Uh, a Markov Expected Utility Decision Analysis. That was the type of statistical analysis they used. Uh, and it was a model that they based that on. And this was uh, published by a group in the University of Washington in Seattle, Washington. Um, and it was actually a, a group of orthopedic surgeons as well as health economists. Just to give um, some background, um, infection after a total hip replacement is, is disastrous. Uh, and is a commonest indication for revision surgery. Um, there are sort of three main types of infection after arthroplasty. Acute uh, or early being within the first three weeks. And that's when the pathology is generally confined to the joint space and there's no bone or prosthetic interface involvement. And the treatment really is uh, aggressive surgical debridement, exchange of the polyethylene, um, uh, but you're aiming for component retention and IV antibiotic suppression. And this will give you around a 90% chance of no reinfection. The other group is a chronic or over three weeks uh, where there's a polysaccharide biofilm formed around the implant which must be removed. And this infection has invaded the prosthetic bone interface. And Cagli's negative staphylococcus is the most common um, organism isolated. Um, with this you have to remove your prosthesis, uh, debride all infected bone and soft tissue, uh, use an antibiotic cement spacer, um, oh, for some reason this is uh, cut off my slides. Um, anyway, uh, IV antibiotics and then reconstruction further on down the track. And then there's uh, hematogenous, which can be from uh, another infection elsewhere in the, in the body, such as from an infected dental abscess or um, uh, cholecystitis or somewhere else. And you, you treat uh, dependent on the timing, as, a, as demonstrated above. So the criteria for reconstruction, um, really you need a benign clinical examination, normal inflammatory markers, negative aspiration cultures if you choose to do that, and the condition of the soft tissues in the wound is the most important uh, factor when you're d considering reconstruction. Joint uh, aspiration from the literature has been shown to be important, um, and they suggest uh, lowest values to suggest infection uh, should be uh, greater than 1,100 1, cells per milliliter. Uh, and greater than 64% polymorphs uh, would indicate that you shouldn't uh, reconstruct. Um, and that was from a very large uh, retrospective review of 13,000 uh, arthroplasties. So what are the outcomes of the inf infected total hip? Obviously reconstruction if the soft tissue is in the joints um, um, functional. Um, fusion if there's extensive soft tissue damage and there's a non-functional joint. A resection arthroplasty if they're, uh, if they're a poor surgical candidate or amputation, but you only reserve that in, for the very sick patients. And so current trends are generally in uh, most parts of Europe and some parts of the US to opt for a two-stage revision. Um, however, direct uh, exchange or one-stage revision has, a, has, um, has got a place in some centres. Uh, but is known to have a higher reinfection rate. Um, this must be weighed up, however, the secondary procedure has got additional morbidity and, and, and immobility between procedures, which has in itself risks. Currently, there are no randomized controlled trials to compare these two treatment modalities. So what the paper wanted to do was, does um, it hypothesize, does two-stage revision, um, be, so is it superior treatment for a patient with an infected total hip? Uh, when literature-derived probability values for the possible clinical outcomes and patient and surgeon-derived utility values were considered in an expected value decision analysis using a Markov model. It sounds quite wordy. I'll explain <laughs> it. So decision analysis um, uh, cycle is a, basically a systematic synthetic approach, and this is used in, as a business model in, in a lot of, uh, um, well, a lot of uh, high-end business as to what they're going to do when they uh, develop um, a strategy. Um, so basically, you have, uh, uh, you basically, the patient and the surgeon, so when you apply it to me uh, medical care, um, a patient and the surgeon assign a, a utility value from possible outcomes. So what that basically means is that um, 
the patient will fill out a questionnaire uh, and, they, and they'll say, if you were to fill this out for a friend, um, this is how they did it in this study, um, how would you feel, say, if you had a successful outcome, if you had chronic severe pain, how would you grade that? And then the surgeon said, well, I would grade it and um, they would grade it sort of objectively in their way. And you see where the two meet. Um, they also, you also, um, they, in this study, they did a systematic review of the literature, um, which basically indicated the likelihood of each outcome occurring, such as reinfection, death, um, and I'll go on. Um, and the overall merit of each approach was calculated by dis discounting the life expectancy, so how many years they had left to live, uh, uh, and weighed that up with um, probability weighted utility values or quality of life. Uh, and they did that with quality adjusted life years. And then they did a sensitivity analysis, which allowed allowed them to compare, um, you know, just how valuable uh, what, where the pr parameters up or down to ensure that they weren't assuming that there were things happening, especially with time over time. So the designed um, study design was in sort of five parts. It was a model. They looked at the probabilities. They looked at the utilities and the statistical analysis and the funding sources. So they used a what's called a Markov cohort simulation model, um, which was, had moderate complexity. Now, if you look at the paper, it was quite complicated. And then they used this model over one year, and then they extrapolated out, out to 10 years. They looked at all the uh, systematic review of all the literature in May 2008 from Medline, JBJS, with the search terms infection, total hip arthroplasty, and treatment. Identified 4,040 articles and uh, looked at them all, and they, uh, they hi highlighted all the articles with direct exchange or two-stage revision that were read, and even went through all the bibliographies uh, to, to make sure they weren't missing any, and they included non-English articles. They excluded um, any articles with a duration of infection under three weeks, so they were looking in this group at chronic infection. Um, if uh, appropriate post-op antibiotics weren't giving, uh, depending on the sensitivities, they excluded those. Uh, those without decent uh, follow-up data or follow-up data less than two years, they're also excluded. So they found 11 articles on two-stage revision uh, and eight, eight on direct exchange with a number of patients from the two-stage two revision group of 321 and uh, 576 in the direct exchange group. And the average age were fairly similar, slightly lower in the two-stage revision group of 61 and a half years compared with 64 years. So unfortunately, it's not... I apologize that it's not projecting well. It must have changed it on this um, version of um, PowerPoint. They looked at uh, the number of hips involved, the age, um, number of successful procedures. If it was a stage procedure, the average time between the stages and the number of patients who didn't have a second surgery um, um, but was planned to. They looked at all the reinfections uh, and how they were treated, either with repeat revision, resection, or long-term antibiotics. They documented um, mechanical uh, complications and how they were treated, either operatively or non-operatively, and those included post-op dislocation, periphysetic fracture, uh, greater trochanter fracture or non-union, <coughs> and aseptic loosening, and also looked at deaths. And they used the complications, reinfections, and deaths as some of their strong endpoints as well. They defined from this a, a successful outcome being a functional prosthesis, absence of clinical infection, and no additional hip surgery for whatever reason. So how they did this, they used a, what's called a time trade-off utility analysis uh, of the patient and, and surgeon. Now this is where it gets even more complicated because the authors are actually quoting, uh, in, they're using tables in this paper from a previous paper that they published a couple of years ago. And um, basically they, they asked them 10 quick, they had 50 patients in that paper and they asked them 10 questions. And um, so the surgeon's answers on the same questions are in this graph here. And the ones that are starred, they, they, were, they found uh, mildly significant. This one here, which is, which is number six, which if, if, I, if I move on to the next slide, was constant severe pain, okay? So that basically meant that with these 10 questions, patients were willing to live longer uh, even if they were in constant severe pain and had lower quality of life, whereas the surgeons felt that quality of life was better than actually living longer. 
So that's where that sort of comes in. Then from all that, they created this very complicated looking um, model of uh, direct exchange revision. And we've sort of gone through all this already. So, well, so they don't proceed to a second surgery. Um, a successful revision, whether they had a resection arthroplasty,